It's all energy and excitement as the 400 staff and students of St. Joseph's College prepare for a special event in the life of the school. In two days' time, the President of Kiribati will be bringing a group of Australian guests to witness the launch of a new boat and the opening of a brand new preschool. St. Joseph's is a Catholic boarding school on the outer island of Abeyang, some two to three hours by boat from the capital, South Tarawa. It's been an unusual year for St. Joseph's in that they've had two Australian volunteers working in the school. Mariana or Mana Ellis is a high school science teacher who's here on a two-year contract. Former university academic and boat builder Anthony Green is here for a shorter six-month period. I'm here to teach boat building to vocational students and develop a curriculum whereby boat building can be taught as an employment direction for senior students. Very few Australian volunteers have worked outside South Tarawa and the process of adjustment for mana was quite major. And so we came over on Friday night and on Saturday I sat down here at the back of the guest house and I went, I don't think I can do this and I started crying. Oh my goodness, I want to cry now. I started crying like bawling. I went, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. This is just too much. I can't do this. I'm really sorry. And they went, no, 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 you're okay. It's all right to be overwhelmed. And the two things that I had to cry about at that point were, I don't have a broom to sweep my house and I don't know how to do hand washing. <laughs> so out of everything I could have chosen, it was the broom and the hand washing. So I had to get used to living in, let's face it, this is nothing like Sydney or Canberra, like polar opposites. Being on an outer island is its own set of problems. Um, there just is very little contingency and no fallback and no one has got a spare can of paint or a packet of nails and they're real issues. So we only got mobile phone access about a month ago. When I first arrived we had internet but then internet was turned off after about a week, maybe two weeks of being here. About a week after I arrived here the planes didn't come to Avayang for a month. So I was essentially here by myself with no communication and no way of getting out very easily and it it was tough and I know I sound like I was you know three or something but it was a really big adjustment period but looking back on it it was probably a really good thing because it taught me that I can live here and it's okay and things are going to work. Personally you know I, I've been welcomed in a way that was hard to imagine it's just unconditional welcome. And the head girl from last year was in my science class, in my chemistry class in Form 6. She sat down to me and she said, Miss, are you happy here? And I said, yeah, I am. Why? And she goes, oh, we were really worried about you, Miss. So we sat down and we had a meeting about how we could make you happy. Anthony's vocational class is joined by youth from the neighbouring village. This modern recreation of a traditional canoe is their third project. The second, their pride and joy, will be launched at the forthcoming event. Um, this, this boat is a Philip Bolger 18 foot uh, utility outboard launch. You can use it for any number of applications, for fishing, for cargo transport, quick runs to Tarawa, and we'll cut the slots like this. Boat building is hugely demanding. There is almost no room for error. You just have to imagine that the plywood's going to go continuously. If someone's cutting up a little cleat of wood, um, half a metre long, 2 be one and they take it over to the boat and it's an inch short, oh well, that's a mere inconvenience. They can chuck that away and go and cut another one. If we've been making a stem that's glued up laminations and it's taken three or four days of work and careful measurement, if somebody inadvertently cuts off a hundred mil of that they saw in the wrong place, that is a disaster. Uh, that is a monumental setback. There may be no solution at all. So I've had to operate in this kind of zone of interference where I step back and let passively 
things take their course and other times I've just had to step in like a boat building Nazi and just pick up the saw and cut on the line. There certainly are higher achievers, people who are more confident. They know there's opportunities on Tarawa and possibly even offshore of employability. <laughs> So if we have the structure of the ESTA... Science is a hard subject anyway. The syllabus or the prescription that comes out of Fiji is a very, very challenging prescription. For any student to learn that in a language that's not their first language, I think is incredible. They work really hard on their English and they have to learn it in English. Good, well done. Okay, thank you, Miss. <laughs> yeah? yeah? We'll be fine, we can do it. I've also had to change the way I teach. There is no photocopying and that sort of stuff. I don't have lots of chemicals to use for experiments. I don't have lots of glassware. I can't take the students to a computer lab and say, here's a simulation of it. And I'm still trying to get around that. So last week we made organic molecules and the atoms were balls made out of coconut leaves. Hopefully though, we can get some kids to enjoy chemistry and to do better than they would have, even if they don't get the top mark, maybe they'll go up a mark. So let me give you the tour of my house. 12 months after a very daunting start, Mana has found herself totally at home as a valued contributor to the life of the school. This is your backyard. And it is with some pride that she shows a volunteer friend her small piece of paradise in this remote part of the Pacific. We're incredibly lucky to be at St Joseph's. Our kids are fantastic, our staff work so hard. Everyone wants to make the whole of St Joseph's bigger and better and that sort of stuff. Of all the schools I could have been at in Kiribati, I think I'm incredibly lucky that I'm at this one. It's beautiful. The President has been joined by the newly arrived Australian High Commissioner and his wife. Also present is the New Zealand High Commissioner. And I think um, the partnership that we have enjoyed with our development partners has been very healthy. And in this regard, I think the step forward that you have taken is very much uh, something that will contribute to maintaining that credibility and uh, the confidence of our partners in what it is that we are doing. Very good, boys. I'm proud of you. I'm proud. We also we bro. Very good. I like to start very inauspiciously in boat launches. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this boat will begin its life with a very auspicious kind of launch. But before the boat launch, we have the official opening of the new preschool, which has been resourced by a grant from the Australian High Commission's Direct Aid Program. Let's open it together and turn it into your school. Yes! yes. 